Mere Reforms Won't Work, an essay by Eric Schechter. 1. Introduction It's hard to face facts when they're contrary to everything that you and most other people have ever believed. We're on the verge of extinction, most likely by climate collapse or nuclear war. Those are both coming much sooner than the corporate news says. We're being steered toward them by a plutocracy, that is, rule by the rich. It's been thinly disguised as democracy, but it may now be in the process of shedding that disguise. And for ages we've suffered unnecessarily from poverty and conventional war. More about that later. Only a big mistake could get us into such a mess. Only big changes have any chance of getting us out. Our big mistake was 12,000 years ago, when we stopped sharing. By now, property and plutocracy are so ingrained in our culture that hardly anyone even notices them. Reformists hope to solve our problems by working within the system, making little changes that seem big to them. They don't see what the system really is, how it causes the problems, how it prevents even the little changes. Reformism is not working. And there is no hope of persuading the plutocrats to behave better. Our economic system forces them to compete against each other for the short-term profits that keep them in power one more day and it forces them to disregard how their long-term efforts are destroying the world. 2. Property and Power We humans have existed in our present form for about 300,000 years. For most of that time we were hunter-gatherers, cooperating and sharing as friends and equals. We evolved as social animals, and that is still our nature. Sharing is still what we teach our kids, still where we turn in crisis, still who we are genetically. But 12,000 years ago, the Ice Age ended, and that made immense cultural changes possible. Not necessary, but possible. I'm simplifying here. These changes didn't all happen at once. We began farming and settled in villages and later cities. That may have been a plus but also we replaced sharing and friendship with private property and cutthroat competition. That was our big mistake. Selfishness, inequality, poverty, violence, and worse have become accepted as normal, and now they're about to kill us all, as I'll explain. We'll only survive by a return to sharing, but that's hard to even imagine after 12,000 years of separateness. If we don't share, we must trade, for labor, food, rent, whatever. Trade brings greater profit to the trader in the stronger bargaining position, making him stronger still. So trade increases inequality, which has become huge. It's like the board game Monopoly, which always ends with all the players but one totally impoverished. Wealth is power, so inequality brings plutocracy. Professors Gillins and Page proved statistically that, regardless of elections, our laws follow the wishes of the rich, not the general public. The USA has been a plutocracy ever since its so-called founding in land theft, genocide, slavery, and indentured servitude. Plutocracy is much older than the USA, but the USA is the first plutocracy to disguise itself as a democracy. That was at least partly intentional. James Madison, the chief author of our Constitution, said that it was important, quote, to keep the spirit and form of popular government with only a minimum of the substance, end quote. Desperate competition at all levels makes us all crazy. Some of us become bullies, on our own, or in workplace, police, military, Congress. War and warming continue because they are profitable to weapon makers, polluters, and their politicians. 
So the market is not as wise or efficient as its myths claim. 3. Extinction Runaway global warming has already begun. It was initially triggered by greenhouse gases from human activities. But by now, some of the consequences of warming are also causes of further warming. That's called feedback. For instance, warming melts ice and diminishes the sunlight reflected into space and increases the sunlight absorbed by Earth. That causes further warming. Feedback accelerates the warming continuously, in fact, exponentially. Tipping points accelerate the warming in spurts. Both accelerations make the warming bigger, faster, and harder to stop, but they are rarely mentioned by the corporate press or the IPCC. We're in the end game now. Even if gradual reforms could work, too little time remains for them. We're already seeing extreme weather and crop failures. As these increase, civilization will fall. But even after that, feedback will continue raising the temperature. Then all the crops and wildlife will die, and any remaining humans will starve. Even the rich. So please don't talk to me about adapting to new conditions. Maybe it's not too late yet. Some rapid, radical remedies, such as biochar or mirrors, might still stop the warming and even reverse it if implemented right now. But those remedies are not being implemented because they wouldn't make the rich richer. Governments, the representatives of the rich, have ignored climatologists for decades. The other likely cause of extinction is nuclear war. It hasn't begun yet, but its likelihood is rising. It could happen as a spin-off from any of the so-called conventional wars that we keep having as our government struggles to remain top bully. Plutocrats recently have talked about winning a nuclear war, but that's madness. The initial blasts would kill half the world in minutes, and then radioactive fallout and nuclear winter would kill the other half of the world in months. As long as our rulers stockpile nukes, it's inevitable that eventually we'll have a nuclear war. It may start accidentally, as in the movie Dr. Strangelove. We've already had many close calls. Look up how Stanislav Petrov saved the world in 1983 by disobeying orders. We'll only be made safe by universal disarmament. That requires friendship. War and warming are both perpetuated for profit by plutocrats. Most activists against war or warming have not yet understood that they need to question our economic system. To survive, we need community, friendship, sharing, cooperation, not cutthroat competition. See, there are excellent selfish reasons for becoming unselfish. 4. Lies Politicians and businessmen have lied for thousands of years, but their techniques advanced substantially in the 20th century. Adolf Hitler wrote about the big lie, an assertion so big that few would question it. Hitler wrote that the Jews were telling a big lie, but that assertion of Hitler's was itself a big lie. FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover told a similar lie about the Communists. Now the USA's military-industrial complex tells similar lies about Russia, China, and other competitors. In Orwell's novel, 1984, the military was called the Ministry of Peace. Around the time when that novel was published, the War Department of the USA was renamed the Defense Department, though its mission was not changed. This made it easier for Americans to believe that their military was the good guys in all of the many wars that the USA somehow kept getting into. That illusion has been supported by all of our television and movies. But what's the truth? Read Smedley Butler and David Swanson on this subject. 
All of the USA's many wars are based on lies to make a few rich men richer. So our honored statesmen in both money parties really are thieves and mass murderers. But even after many past lies are exposed, many people somehow continue to believe that this time the government is finally telling the truth. The corporate press lies freely, preceding each lie with the phrase, sources say. And many readers overlook that phrase and believe the lie. The corporate press also constantly lies by omission. It never discusses historical context, nor the real basis of our society, nor the very different world that is possible. And so a real democracy wouldn't be much of an improvement. We can't vote wisely when we are misinformed. We don't even know the right questions to ask. Question everything, even yourself. Are you aware of your own assumptions? In conclusion, we must replace the entire socioeconomic system. Only friendship, sharing, and cooperation have any chance of saving us. The first step is to make more people aware of all these things. Help spread the word.